Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, mums and dads, everybody. Um, welcome to Freshly Grounded. Before we start, let's talk about our brand new product. Um, freshly Grounded, the game. There we are. We have it there. Freshly Grounded, the game. Is it going to focus? On? There we go. Look at that beauty right there. Oh, there's nothing on that side. Little personal message from me there. Freshly Grounded, the game. Open up. Uh, freshly Grounded, the game is a, a game uh, that was created with the intention of allowing us to deepen our relationships with our friends, our families, our loved ones. Um, and the idea is that there's questions, conversation starters that we've spent a very long time putting together. Um, the conversation starters that hopefully we've, we've trigger the psychology um, of, uh, of of answering the question in a very deep manner. The idea is that you have a conversation with your loved ones that you don't normally have. Um, let's say, for example, you go on a date with your missus or you go on a date with your husband, you're going out, and instead of talking about the kids the whole time, because you know that when you're a parent, all you're doing is talking about the kids, um, you you take these cards out and you, you have a have a genuine conversation and you, you tell yourself to, to, to kind of dig deep. Um, we've had so many amazing stories of, of people who have played the cards and um, been able to connect with loved ones on a, on a level that they haven't before. And also, like rebuild relationships that had been broken in the past and stuff and so uh i recommend it um head over to the link in the description um to get your cards and um uh, yeah freshly grounded i think it's like freshly grounded.com forward slash the game or something uh but the link will be in the description okay also um guys we are still trying to help raise money for two things i know it's annoying uh, to sometimes hear like oh everybody's trying to raise money but i think the beauty of 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 being kind of in the muslim scene is that we respect and love and um uh, all of this kind of like goodness of trying to help each other and and there's two projects that are massive right now um that we're trying to push and and one is the the masjid in kilburn which really needs some help and support it's a masjid that um has been bro uh, locked down since the lockdown and it hasn't reopened um because it's in a really bad physical state um they're trying to completely turn it around um they're trying to increase the prayer space and get more quran students back in there there was 150 quran students that aren't able to study right now in that message because of that so um please do support that it's a local mosque and we should support our local message and secondly um there we're still raising money for um families in yemen who are still dealing with outbreak of cholera, which has been going on for years, uh, still dealing with coronavirus, and uh, trying to provide them emergency packs uh, that are 100 pound emergency packs. Uh, uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to provide 100, 100 pound emergency packs. So anything you could do towards that, uh, the links for all of that will be in the description. Uh, this episode is with a brother called Junior, uh, a brother called Abdul Aziz, a brother called Jeremy. Uh, you'll hear all of the reasons uh, why he has so many names uh, in the episode. But an amazing brother who has an amazing story. And uh, I don't want to give too much of his story away, but I think that some of these episodes where we just hear an inspiring story can of often be the best ones. So without any further ado, this is Freshly Grounded with our brother Junior. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? By best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? <laughs> and just like that we're on. <laughs> um, Jazakallah khair, okay, Julia, for, for, for joining me. Okay, man. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Alhamdulillah, all good. Um, okay, I have to ask, I have to start with the first question, which is, um, which is, you explained that there's various names that you're known by, and oh. obviously <laughs> I'm intrigued. So why don't you, why don't you start with that? Yeah, so basically, my my parents are from Nigeria. They were born there. Uh, my my dad came here first in about um, in the eighties, and his father's name is Jamu. Now I've done research, and uh, basically that that name Jamu is it comes from the Arabic word Jami, so like Jama. 
uh, the gatherer. So with Nigerians, though, with certain names, they add a little extra sauce. <laughs> so, for example, uh, my sister is called, uh, her, her, uh, the Arabic name is Amina, but they add a T at the end, so it's Aminat. Okay. So, so for me, they added a U. I, I don't, that's just how they pronounce it, Jami U. <laughs> but, but growing up, um, because that's my grandfather's name, the, my mum and dad call me Junior. They call me his Junior. We, was, we were both born in Juma. Um, I speak like him. I, I reminded my dad of him. So they it just they just call me Junior from young. Sometimes my dad calls me JJ and whatnot. So in school, a lot of people didn't know how to pronounce Jamie. You, uh, some people say Jamie. Uh, I used to, so I had a friend in school. He used to call me Jamie Dodgers. Like oh so, gosh. I can only imagine. So, <laughs> so in, I was called so ba- I was school, called Basil the Brush at one point. So, Allah, is that like, because like, of Faisal or I don't get that? I do you know what it was, bro? Because Faisal, because my fa- right, so my family, so so mine is fa- in Arabic. Mine is Faisal, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot, of, just like you, bro, a lot of us like Muslims who come from like um, who's like we're like second generation from various different countries ha- have these problems yeah. with our name. So my name in Arabic is Faisal, but in Urdu. Uh, you would more so say Fessel, like with that with that spelling. So oh, yeah. in my in my in my household, my family would call me Fessel. And so in English, obviously when they heard my parents call me Fessel in English, the easier kind of transition would be Fassel from Fessel to Fassel. So I grew oh, yeah. up pretty much being called Fassel. So if you hear my brother, he still calls me Fassel and stuff. Um, yeah. And then as I got older, I only realized like the Arabic way it should be pronounced, which is with yeah. the sword and the yeah. So then I started telling people that my name is either Faisal or, or I would tell people Faisal because it's a bit easier to pronounce. Um, but when it was like for my high school years and stuff, Faisal was like what people would call me. And that always yeah. I'm Basil and Basil the Brush. And so it wasn't like a bullying thing. I think some people just. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's just friends, a nickname yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. They switch it up. So, so like literally from young. Even my mum and dad, they call me Junior, Junior, Junior. So that stuck. And that was so easy when teachers on the register, Junior, just call me Junior, I'll go to work, Junior. So um, it's just been Junior since then. But obviously, I started practicing uh, around the riots, uh, 2011. And because of a lot of my friends, they came from like the roadside and, and whatnot, and they, they reverted and whatnot. They change their name, so they might have had an English name, for example, as Sean or Jermaine or whatever. And now they've named Amir or Abdul Abdul Rahman. Yeah. So I thought, let me change my name, even though I was born Muslim. So when I started going to the masjid, I said, listen, instead of calling me Jami, people don't know it or whatnot, just call me Abdul Aziz. (laughs) I just chose my old name. But then I was, then I sat down with my dad and said, listen, there's no, there's no really point of doing that. So some people know me as Abdulaziz Jami Jr. But because you you mentioned Urdu, um, my wife's Pakistani. So okay. literally, okay. literally, when I when I got married, they started calling me Jamal. So like literally, left, right, centre, I've got so many different names. Like my in-laws call me Jamal. Dad, mum and dad calls me Junior Jami sometimes. So it's like you know what, just call me whatever, as long as it's not. Um, Disrespectful, <laughs> right? Bro, I, I feel the same. But people often say to me, um, like, "How do I pronounce? How would you like your name pronounced?" And I'm like, "Any of the above." Do you know what I mean? As yeah, long yeah. as it's like not disrespectful. I remember when I first started practicing, I have a similar kind of story with the name. So I didn't change my name, but I really loved I, uh, the fact that people had kunyas, and I was like, "Oh yeah. man, like that's really cool!" Like because in the Arab, in 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 the kind of the the the, the, the previous times. People would, it would be a massive sign of respect to be called by your kunya. Like it, it was a name that was beloved to you, right? Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. Um, and then you you find out about all these Sahaba that we know as like having a specific name. Obviously, the obvious one that comes to mind is Abu Hurairah and uh, anhu. And the, the 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 thing about it is that um, you it's a name that you love and it's like a sign of respect and so yeah. people around me was having had kunyas and stuff i was like you know what i want a kunya and then i was like oh but i don't have a a kid right so like at that time i didn't have a kid and so i was like yeah, but abu Huraira did it as well though yeah exactly so then that's, so. that's why i was like you know what so um so then i went with um abu sufyan because i like that name okay. and uh so i went to I, I remember when i went to do some work uh abroad uh, they would call me Abu Sufyan. 
and um, that sounds very vague and like peculiar. So I, I do, I, I also do some kind of, kind of like branding consulting. So like the, the, the stuff that you see at Freshly Grounded and stuff, like yeah. I help some other Muslim businesses kind of sp sprice up their brands. Um, and so they, they'd call me Abu Sufyan. And then I had a kid and my like cousin had a kid. My cousin called his son Sufyan and therefore <laughs> like it didn't make sense. And now that I have a kid, I, my kunya has changed to Abu Zakaria, <laughs> obviously because my son's called Zakaria. So. Yeah, 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 do you know what names are a beautiful thing, man? Same thing, thing, same thing with you. I I love the name Khalil. Okay, that's beautiful. Got, that's a beautiful I've, name, bro. I've got I got a brother. I got a brother. I got a, not a brother like mum and dad, but like Achi. Uh, his name's Khalil. But then one of my uh, friends who um, I gave shahada to, he named his son Khalil. Okay. So when my son, well, similar to your story, when my son was born, because he's two and a half, like two and a half now. I was like, I, want, I like Khalil, I like Khalil, but my friend's son's name's Khalil. They play together, you're just calling them the same name. So we, um, my mother-in-law, mashallah, she said, just call him Elias. We come up, with, we came up with a couple of names, and my mom said, yeah, go with Elias. My mother-in-law said, go with it's Elias. So, you know, you know, mothers are always right, so we just went Elias. So now oh, I, I love like, that like name you, well. Abu Elias. Alhamdulillah, I love name Elias. I love name Khalil. You know what, bro? Um, my uh, there's a few names likewise that we. I, I like, but it's like um, we have people who are too, very close to us that have those names. Too, and it's just, too many, too yeah, many. Yeah, so like I like the name Idris. I love the name Idris, and that was, also that was Musa. Yeah, that's that's my dad's name, Musa. Oh, Allah so, Akbar. So, so, so because we, we have people like that close to us. So we ha we have to find names that we don't have like family or friends who have have the same name because it's it's just gonna feel weird. So I like the name Musa, but because my dad's name is that, I was like. Uh, and then on top of that, my brother-in-law, uh, his wife, uh, one of her sons is named Musa. So it's like, okay, I like Ibrahim, but one of my um, uh, my wife's uh, nephews called that. So it's like, what do you choose? So Ilyas, I don't, I don't really know anyone personally like Ilyas. So we went with Ilyas, alhamdulillah. Do you know what? Girls' names are always harder though, aren't they? Like we're talking about names here, but girls' names are very... Do you have a daughter? Because No, 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 no. Just one son. Okay. But may Allah, may Allah grant you a, 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 a amazing I mean, healthy I mean, daughter. I mean, I mean, I mean. Um, but literally, with with uh, women, I know what you mean, because because how how we see it, how I see it as well is because I come from African background, my wife from an Asian background is like, what do you choose? Mm. So obviously, you you try to go for like a more Arabic name, but if you go for an Arabic name in terms of a of a girl, most of them are taken. Yeah, there's not a big pool of them, bro. I love the I love the name Sumeya. I know so many brothers yeah. who named their daughter Sumeya, Aisha. Yeah. Uh, Adija, Even Amina, so like, Amina is so popular in the Asian so culture. Coming. Yeah. So coming. But That's inshallah, my, uh, it's it's a beautiful. Uh, do you know it's a beautiful topic actually? Like, th th these are the episodes of Fresh Ground that I love, man, because sometimes we have such intense conversations about people's stories, and, and I do want to get into yours as well. But yeah. I just love having a natter with a brother, to be honest. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, uh, it's nicely eased in. Um, okay. Um, uh, Ahi Junior, I'm going to call you Junior for now because that's what I know you as in terms yeah, of yeah, yeah. as we've been messaging. Yeah, fine, um, let's talk a bit about it because uh, I do want to talk about various things in this podcast, and I don't, I, I don't want to like get hung up on just the story itself because I think that um, I think often what we find is that people talk about how, people talk about their stories on various platforms anyway, and and I, I think that people what I found is that people's stories are so beautiful but at the same time they shouldn't be defined by their story because conversations like now I find so much more powerful than someone's story alone because conversations like now show a multifaceted like a personality and your different yeah. the different kind of like depths of, of, of thinking and stuff like that but but I do think that your story is very powerful and can affect a lot of people so so we'll go into it um, yeah. let's start with uh, like bang in the middle of it let's start with the stabbing because nine years ago, you're talking 2011. Is that does that in any way collide with the riots? Yeah, literally. Oh, wow. um, just after the riots, I got stabbed. So, okay. so literally. Um, so basically, before that, I wasn't up to no good, but my friends were. The 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 thing that saved me and the thing that helped me was football. Um, just before my stabbing, I just had a left QPR. So um, I was there from 13 to 16 and I didn't even apply for college because I was so confident that I would get a contract. So before before a professional contract, you got a YTS, you used to call it back in the day. So it's like a scholarship from the ages of 16 to 18. You're there. You can play around with the reserves and whatnot. So I didn't get offered that contract at QPR. I went 
I went to Tottenham on trial, went to Southampton. Southampton's one was crazy. Like I, They paid for my uh, train ticket. I went there, played a match against Crystal Palace, uh, came off injured, went into the office, and the manager, he done it on purpose. So when I got into the office, he grabbed a piece of paper and put it in the, uh, in, in, in the drawer in the desk. And he said, do you know what that was? I said, no. He said, that, that was a contract. If you showed me something in that game, we would have signed you here and there today. So literally on the train back to London, crying my eyes out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So literally, college started, let's say, September 13th as normal. I applied for college um, September the 7th. So I was just doing my A-levels and whatnot and then finished college and that's when the riots happened. And literally, I, live, I lived where the riots started. So Tottenham, I grew up in Tottenham, North London. And the riot started at the police station in Tottenham. So people were protesting and whatnot. And then it, it just happened like as a flash. Like quickly, police are out. There's stuff are burning. It's, it's just it's just crazy. Like literally, I was. But we was at because um I go to the same masjid as uh, Ustad Jamal. Okay. Uh, he 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 grew up there. He um became Hafiz there. Mashallah, may Allah protect him. Mashallah, see him the I other mean. day. Um. So it's amazing literally, how like everyone's connected in like different yeah, ways. Yeah, in some way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So literally during the riots, when everyone's coming down the high road, doing that shop, doing that shop, we we've just formed a line outside the masjid. Like, listen, you can't touch the masjid. And to be honest, the non-Muslims respected it and they said, "No, nah, don't worry, we're not gonna touch it and whatnot." So yeah, fast forward, the riots have finished, and literally a week after is when when the stabbing happened. But during the riots is when the whole like commotion happened. I wasn't I wasn't like I wasn't gang affiliated. I was like I knew everyone. I I would I was involved but I wouldn't go out and like if they had um uh, like battles with another area I wouldn't like ah oh, let's go because it was more football. I was more concentrating on football and on top of that my parents like it was kinda hard to like get out sometimes in it. So literally we finished all we finished all of that and and um, I stopped hanging around with the boys who were like a bad influence. And I started hanging around with my cousins and people in the masjid and whatnot. So one one time, right after the riots, um, my cousin's riding my bike and a group of boys that he went to school with came up to him and tried to take the bike or was just like saying things like, let's have that bike, let's get that bike. And I said, that's my bike. And I knew the boys as well because they grew up in a local area and whatnot. And they just started shouting and whatever, whatever, whatever. And I said, you know what? Listen, I'm trying to practice now. This is my masjid. Let's leave it at that. But at the same time, I was still playing football. I was playing semi-pro. Um, played for Enfield Town, Wolfram Abbey, uh, like semi-pro teams. So I said, listen, I ain't got time for this. I'm not or I'm not on the roads or trying to be on the roads. Let me go play football. So I went to go play football and my cousins phoned me like, listen, they just tried to come in the masjid, tried to punch me tried to take the bag, I said, subhanAllah, listen, like these these people, when you're trying to do good, they're just trying to pull you back and whatnot. So like literally for a month during Ramadan that year, it was just a back and forth. They would see me and just hurl abuse and we'll see them get into a little commotion and whatnot. So literally after uh, the Ramadan finished, we thought it was all over. We didn't see anyone. My cousin had went to Umrah um, and whatnot. And then... Um, just one night, finishing praying Isha, um, I came outside the masjid. Because normally, normally in the masjid, because I live around the corner, so it's like I pray and then um, you just you just talk to the couple uncles in the masjid, couple brothers and whatnot. So for that reason, for some reason, that night I just stayed behind for longer than usual. So um, th- talking to all the uncles, coming out the masjid, walking out the masjid. As soon as I've come out the masjid uh, gates, I've looked left. There's the whole group of boys that were there at the commotion when they tried to steal the um, bike from my cousin. So I'm like, is this a setup? Is this? I, I'm. I was, I was so. Or is it just a coincidence that they're just walking on the high road and they're walking on the same side as the masjid as well? It's like, what's happened here? So um, literally, so we saw them. They're like, oh, kind of. Um, what you saying now? You saying this last month? Da, 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 da. I said, listen, I'm I'm just here. I'm I'm just at the match. I just finished praying, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then, literally, like three of them like, started pulling out knives. So in my head, I said, listen, I can run, 
but do I really want to run? I don't want to be a coward. Like, but I should have. I, I should have. I should have run. But I was just looking at the ones with the knives. I was looking at the ones with the knives, and then one of them came up behind me, punched me, uh, punched me in my temple, and then I've kind of uh, uh, slipped and leaned back onto like the shutters of the shop that's near the masjid. And then literally they just um, started jumping on top of me. Um, and then I'm thinking, I just like punching my leg. I, why are you punching my leg? W- what's happening here? So they've all they've all got up, all ran away. Uh, a couple of the brothers from the master chased some chased some away, some ran away. Just, just everyone scattered. So I've got up here yeah, and literally I'm wearing a grey tracksuit. I've looked down and you, you just see like a pool of blood around my leg. So because they've stabbed me twice in my leg. So um, one of the brothers, he was like studying to be like um, a paramedic and whatnot. He took off his imam and just tied my leg. They carried me into the masjid. Police came, ambulance came. So it's like, what do I tell my parents now? Do they, do they think I'm gang affiliated? I'm, I'm not. I'm literally just came out the mosque praying. So literally not to worry my parents, star for Allah, um, I kind of lied and I said it was mistaken identity. Because I didn't want to bring that kind of, uh, and on top of that, the masjid, I'm, I'm new to going to this masjid. So if they think this brother's coming here, creating yeah, fun. you don't want to cause a fit now. I didn't want to, and on top of that, our masjid is a primary school as well. It's not just a masjid, there's kids there. So I said, listen, it's just a mistaken identity. We leave it as that. Um, but I had people like who I, who I used to hang around with. Who are up to no good? Like, listen, do you want to go back? Do you want to? I'm like, listen, there's no point. Like, what is it? What is it gonna solve? Like, one of them, one of them get hurt, we get hurt again. It's just a back and forth thing. I'm just trying to pray. I'm trying to come to the masjid, better myself, etc., etc. So I said, listen, leave it like that. Don't worry about it. And we ended it there. Um, and Subhanallah, the way Allah works, um, like a year or two later. What I heard one of the brother, one of the guys who stabbed me ended up getting deported for a different crime, and two other ones who were involved who had knives they eventually got stabbed themselves for different uh, uh things that they had going on. Like I had nothing, I had nothing to do with it. So it's like, yeah, it's just like Subhanallah. Like I'm trying to better myself, I'm trying to do good, and this happened, but. I was slowly getting into the deen, started practicing, so I knew it's a test from Allah. Like I could, I could have literally um, said, "No, let's get back, let's get back at them," and who knows where I'll be? I'll probably be in jail with a couple of people who I hung around with. Like I've got friends in, I've got friends in jail for like twelve years, thirteen years, fourteen years, not not small time. So if I, I me looking at it, seeing that this is a test from Allah, what are you gonna do? Are you going to re- retaliate or just leave it as that? It's like, subhanAllah, like, alhamdulillah, I, done the, I chose the right, I chose the right, I've done the right thing. Let's see. You, you know what, bro? Um, there's so many lessons in that, in that, in that story that I can like, like pick apart, but I'll start with one. And that's, um, you mentioned that your parents, it was a bit tricky to get out of the house sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. Do, do you, do you know, sometimes, bro, we, we get upset at parents who are strict and stuff and then you realize that if if maybe if they weren't as strict with that that uh, even earlier on in your life something even worse could happen right it's true it's mm. true it shows it's you the true. gratitude and love and protection that they have for you and on top of that because i had an older brother and majority of my friends were his friends so i hung around with older older lot so like even for example when i was at qpr playing football um, I, I think I still have this letter, but one of the guys who I hung around with, he ended up going in, uh, going to jail, and he wrote me a long letter saying, "Listen, all these other boys that we hang around with, they're up to no good. They don't have a future. You do. You play for QPR. Don't don't try follow them. So like, even like, I know my parents would do it, but even people who were up to no good on on like let's say the roadside or whatever." They would say to me, listen, forget all of that, focus on this, focus on that. So that's why I say football was an important thing. And full circle now, 10 years forward, uh, fast forward 10 years, I've got my own academy to share the same kind of knowledge kind of thing. So it's like, it's crazy how how it works, man. Yeah, so you, you, you mentioned also that 
you felt like football saved you in, in, in terms of like it distracted you from getting involved with what other people are getting involved 100%. with in your area. 100%. And you hear that story so often, like that football saves people and, and sports in general. But obviously us being in the UK and, and football really being our national sport, it's the number you, one hear sport it, yeah. you, you hear it about football the most. So yeah. um, let's talk a bit about your football journey. You're now, you now run an academy. So w- at what point did the academy start? Like how soon after the stabbing? Oh, no, no, no. Literally, the academy is a new thing. Uh, okay. We set it up, I set up the business October last year. Amazing. And, and we started... Um, we started the toddler classes in January and then literally because of COVID, we had to put down pause, but see how Allah works, subhanAllah. So basically I set up the academy in October. I had this idea of um, wanting to play football, um, wanted to start my own thing. And um, I didn't know where to start. So I had a friend who I worked in retail with. He had his own academy. Um, so I went to, I messaged him on LinkedIn because I didn't have the number. Messaged him, messaged him on LinkedIn. I said, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, set up my own academy. I think I've got uh, experience, knowledge to give back to the kids and whatnot. He said, come and meet me. So I went to meet him and we didn't start talking about academy. He just literally started talking about a job. He's like, listen, I'm looking for a coach for my academy. So I said, you know what? I've had my coaching bad for 10 years plus, but I've never used it. I've used it here and there and whatnot. Let me start using it. So let me actually see if if setting up academy is what I want to do. So I said, you know what? I'll take the job. I'll coach your boys. Um, so I coached them from October to the uh, lockdown. And in between that, there was so much things going on at his academy. Uh, to cut a long story short, he ended up um, getting rid of his old, whole academy. Oh like man! He, fold, he folded. He folded the club. He was. He was fine. Like he's been doing it for ten years. There was a lot of, um, let's say, what's the word, um, politics behind the scene and whatnot. So he said, you know what, I'm done with this. So Subhanallah, from from the lockdown and me starting up my own academy, thinking where am I gonna promote? How am I gonna promote? I've now inherited two teams from. Uh, his academy. Oh, Subhanallah, that's amazing. So Subhanallah. You, so you see how Allah works. Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think, you think you're thinking, where's it gonna come from? Where's it gonna come from? And then, it, and then it just comes. Oh, akhi, the, bro, the risk, Akhi, you can you can never predict where the risk comes from. Never. Nah, like I've you never. just come from places that you think from there. I I was yeah. trying to ask for it from over here. I never even thought that was even an option, bro. You know what? The academies are quite. Um, Popular, aren't they? Because we know, I know two guys. Uh, there's a brother um, from Croydon who I know really well who um, runs an academy. And you, I don't know if you know of him. He's from uh, he's from South London, um, but he runs quite a, a popular academy. And then there's another brother. Uh, oh, his name escapes me, but I've uh, I've done a bit of work with him, and um, he coaches uh, like R nine football or something like that. He coaches like. Um, he coaches kids R9. and he's like really probably like, maybe R10 uh, may Allah bless him he's amazing but both of the brothers are such amazing brothers Wasim is a guy in uh, Croydon okay but yeah um, it's really really interesting man um, what I'm going to do Akhi, is I want to skip it back a bit right because I realised that we started talking about the academy but we didn't close off the section of where your like hopes of becoming going from semi-pro to pro had ended or if they have ended um so what yeah. was that what, where was it what was that transition because you were playing for qpr at, um uh at arsenal at one point and when did when did that yeah. like kind of close off that chapter so yeah like you said before qpr i was at arsenal so that that's a story in itself but basically i'll try to keep it uh short the sunday league team who i played for Boardwater farm tottenham um who they were notorious they were like listen if you want to get to a, a professional club you go there but you have to be good so I went there uh, because the coach uh, who was in charge of my age group also worked at my school. He was like a, a mentor type of uh, guy at my school. So I went to play there. Whilst I was playing f- uh, in a game, uh, the goalkeeper got injured. So I said, you know what, I'll go and go. I, I, it's just a little muck about Let's Let's go and go. Not knowing that Arsenal and Charlton were watching. So after the game, um, the head coach, Clasford Sterling, um, he um, came to me and said, listen, Arsenal want you, Charlton want you, where do you want to go? I said, listen, Wait, that's... In goal? They, they want you in goal? As a goalkeeper. No, but I was you? originally... Um, now I'm six foot three. Six foot right, three. Tall. So I was tall for my age. I was tall for my age. So I'm, I'm a goalkeeper, bro. 
<laughs> I am, bro. <laughs> I'm not even joking, bro. We've been playing football about literally for like last ten years, bro. Oh, we used to play in uni. We used to play every Wednesday and stuff. And I just is that just, is that by is that by choice or do the brothers put you in goal? <laughs> do you know what, bro? I actually joke about saying that the brother like I like I used to have this joke. I was like, oh, I'm so good at football. I'm always in goal, and I always get picked like last. And, but yeah. uh, like, but say best till last and stuff. But do you know what? Genuinely, um, I chose. I I just love it, man. Like I think that. You know, with you know, playing out is so competitive. Yeah. Playing on the field, and and you you have to be fast, you have to be skillful, you have to be like um, you have have great cardio, and so I think like by chance, like one time, like when we were like twelve or something, I went yeah. in goal, and I just loved it. And you know, as a kid growing up in London, even if you're not into football, you're going like pretty much on a weekly basis, at least to goals or something, or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. or power league, whatever. And yeah, 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 so even up all the way up until university and after university, only recently we stopped doing like weekly football, maybe like a year or two ago. And mm. um, and I would just I, I always been going. I, I think what it is is um, the the satisfaction. You know when you when you when you when you score a goal. It's like satisfying, but everyone wants to score a goal. And also, yeah. it's like satisfying, but the team like that you're opposing are like, oh, like they're annoyed. And it's 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 very competitive, and it's like and and saturated. And so when I went in goal and I saved the goal, I found like a different like ego boost because my team will be like, gas, like raw, oh, what a save. And yeah, the guy yeah. who shot would be like so impressed. He'd be like, like proud of the fact that yeah. I was able to save. And and also like nobody else was like fighting for that position. So I started just getting Ooh. really good at being a goal. And then I, I loved it. And so now when we go football, I'm I like I'm just I'm a goalkeeper and, and I'm I, I love it, man. What you just said, I wish someone told me when I was 13. Because yeah. people ask me now, what what do you think was your biggest mistake? And my biggest mistake was coming out of goal. Really? Because, because literally, I was a striker. I was mucking about in goal, got scouted in goal. So I was at Arsenal for a year, went training, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Literally, um, Roy Massey, who was like the academy coach at the time, said, "We want to take you on tour." And Arsenal's tour is not like no little tour. You're not going to, I don't know, Wales or not. You're going to somewhere in Europe, playing against the likes of Bayern Munich, Ajax, all these Man. European academies, and I. I don't know, like, I wish someone said that, what you just said, because I said, nah, I don't want to play in goal. So literally, one of my friends from uh, the area, he played at QPR, and he said, listen, do you want to come back out as a striker? I said, yeah, man, I'm, I'm sick or tired of playing in goal. So I went to QPR. I was, alhamdulillah, I was good as a striker anyway, so I got into QPR. But if I had stuck to my gun and I had someone older saying, listen, stay in goal, stay in goal, I, I probably might be sitting here, who knows, as a professional um, goalkeeper talking to you because like you said not everyone was fighting for that position everyone mm. was fighting everyone's it's fighting it's not everyone seen as like a desirable striker. position right it's not it's not to the yeah. younger lot it's literally it's not so when I talk to my um, my goalkeeper for my team right now for the academy I tell him listen put in as much work as you can because who knows like I think to become professional the easiest position if you're if you're good to get a uh, to get a contract is like goalkeeper or a fullback, like right back or left back because you just have to be fast, know how to cross, uh, know how to defend, and you're all there. But as a midfielder, you gotta know both sides of the pitch, um, attacking wise. Striker, you get goal, you, you get um, judged on your goals. If you don't score goals, see you later kind of thing. So I wish I w- if if I had to go back and change anything, I would I would I would have stayed in goal. I, I think it's also a part, a, a, a part of it is also like not having greed and ego. I know I just said that, like I kind of got an ego boost from being in goal. But if you have, I think like one of the most powerful things in any field is ownership. If you have ownership of your role and you just, even in business, like if I know that my role in Freshly Grounded is 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 to get, make the episodes happen and that's it, then I'm going to get the best guests and have the best episodes and make sure the yeah. setting's the best. But someone else is focusing on, for example, making sure that like, website or finances or something like that then you're not you're when everyone has their role and they have ownership of it then the team the team becomes perfect because everyone's like owning their their part and it even comes back to the dean like everybody has their their part to play in the dean yeah, um, yeah. i i, I want to move the discussion uh, because i want to ask about something that um that came to mind 
Uh, oh, so, I've lost it now. So, oh yeah, I was gonna say, you were saying that um, you know you you don't know where you would be and this that the other. And I know that Alhamdulillah, you're 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 more than content with where you're at because it's the qadr of Allah. But I just want to say that, bro, Allah could have put someone else in in your position, right? Uh, where they won in an academy and, and they could have turned pro. But I think that there's so much beauty in in the position that you're at because. You know, some, sometimes, Akhi, like, we, we, we turn pro, we get all this money, and we get distracted. And and, and uh, that's not to say that there's people who, who, who there's people who get that money and they, and they do so much good with it. But Allah's put you in a position, bro, where you can touch l- actual lives. And yeah. I, 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 I was speaking to a brother um, yesterday, and he's so helpful, man. He helped us so much with our advert. Um, he gave us microphones and all this kind of stuff. And I said to him that um, he's in such an amazing position because he helps actual lives like he helped me by physically driving down and dropping this off and to be honest bro i don't feel like i've i i do that as, like i don't feel like i have a i'm in a position where i help people physically like you know and, and, no, and but you're you in, are and though, in a and, you but, are though. We've, we've freshly grounded and i wasn't fi- honestly bro, I, wasn't, I wasn't fishing for a compliment so let's leave that there no um, no no, but, no. I, but, know you, I know you i know you weren't but you actually are though because what you the platform that you have and the conversations that you have are needed, and it helps people. Literally, it helps people. So but, no, 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 but, I don't, but I don't but know what you're trying to say though. Okay, if there's two, there's two, there's two, there's two issues with that. A is that it's a public deed, right? And it's, we can never guarantee our public deeds, bro. No, no, and no. I don't even know if my intention is sincere. So I, I can't, I can't, I can't like. I can't sit on this and say, oh yeah, like some people because they're freshly kind of stopped listening to music or whatever, and that's that's me done, ready. But you yeah. see, when you're doing, when you're fit, like you're, you got a, a team of like youth, and they could be on the road, and you're physically there as a mentor, as like a. Some of them don't have fathers in their lives, they don't have brothers in their lives, and you're the one who's like saying to them, like, you, bro, the satisfaction you must get from that must literally give you, like, make the hairs on I'm the back like, of your neck stand up. Do you know what I mean? No, it's, and it's, Allah's it's, put it's, you, right. Allah's put you in that position, and that's probably the, a bigger blessing than going pro. It's it's true because when you when you started that that uh, statement, it's like I was thinking about it the other day. Like, what am I gonna talk about? What am I gonna talk about? And that came up in my mind because if I had become pro with all the people who I used to hang around with and whatnot, like because majority of my friends were non-Muslims, in it. So would would I have started to pray if I became pro? Would I have let the money get to my head? Would I have let the material things get to my head? Would I even got, would I even have got married? So I think about those things all the time. Like sometimes my wife, if I'm watching football or watching highlights, she'll be like, do you miss it? And I'll be like, no, because I wouldn't have been married to you. I probably wouldn't have had Ilyas. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had uh, my son. So like everything happens for a reason, bro. So it's, it's, it's crazy how you said that when I was thinking about that yesterday, but I would I wouldn't change that like oh I would want to be pro I would want to be pro because I'm content with what I've got and on top of that who knows the dark road I could have went down if I went pro etc so now alhamdulillah and that's why the the setup of the academy um it's called elite ballers but elite is an acronym and Oh really what does it stand yeah, for Yeah it, it stands for empowering lives in the ends Oh wow so, so literally amazing. Literally, a lot of people are asked, oh, what do you think about that? And they're like, uh, ends, ends, ends. But I'm taking the words ends. It might have, it might be used in a negative way. Me, I just use it to say it's an area, it's a place. Are you from that ends? Are you from that ends? So literally, my wife said, use something with elite. And I said, ah, are there so many academies with elite? Are they really elite and whatnot? So I said, I want, I want it to make a meaning. I want to... Uh, give advice that I didn't get when I was younger, when I was at QPR, Arsenal, etc. So literally, within 10 minutes, she said, my wife said, use Elite, and I came up with the acronym Empowering Lives in the Ends, and it's stuck since then. A lot of people have said, don't try using it, marketing, marketing, but I'm not doing this for, I don't know how to say it, I'm not doing this for worldly games and whatnot. If I can help five, six boys stay away from the roads and just focus on football. Whether they make it or not, I've helped them. And then on top of that, I have a son now who's looking up to me. If he sees me doing something positive, whether it's coaching or whatever, he's not going to go down that road that I try to nearly go down. So 
yeah, empowering lives in the ends, man. So are you guys back to training now? And um, what, So you said you had a toddler group. How, how, what are the different groups? Um, are you back to training? And also, um, if people are in the area, in North London, and they want to maybe like join, is that a possibility? How can how can the people who are listening support and take part? So at at the so how it started. So I just set it up. I said I didn't I didn't know what I was gonna do. But uh, one of my good friends I went to college with, uh, Rainy Rainy you know, Rainy, he said, listen, I've been wanting to do this academy as well. So we both put our money together and set it up. And the good thing with starting up with him is he will he is working with toddlers um, at a different company. One of my friends who I grew up with as well. Uh, Sylvan uh, Soccer Days If anyone is in the Essex area They should check them out um, So my, my friend Irene, he Who I started the academy with He was working with him And doing toddler sessions So when I had a conversation with him Going for um, teenagers 11, 12 year olds they're, they're at clubs So the the premise was to start off With toddler sessions So we started 2 to 7 um, That was indoors little fun games and whatnot um we started that every sunday but literally because of the lockdown we've stopped that and like i said earlier we've inherited these two teams so literally all, all we got right now is two teams i've got one team uh rennie's got one team and they're both how, under how they? okay, they're both so under 12 going going into year seven but inshallah by the word of allah once we get um clarity from the schools that we used to hire and whatnot we should st- we should start uh we should be starting the toddler sessions, hopefully next next month, if if not by November, October, depending on what the school say. School do you guys say. have to like? Ha, ha, where do you train and stuff? Do you have to have like a? So at the moment, at the moment, yeah, at the moment we're on uh, just like a playing fields. Um, we're gonna we're going to try to be there until like the clocks go back, and then we um before before the lockdown we was training in a certain school lights floodlights and astro turf so we'll be there from october with the older lot with the younger lot because we started it every sunday and now the older lots are going to be having their matches every sunday we want to move the toddler classes to saturdays so hopefully inshallah when we once we get clarity with the schools and whatnot we'll, we'll start the toddler sessions again every saturday Every Saturday. Man, for in it, man. I, I mean, I, it's, I mean, it sounds I mean. like something amazing. Do you have intention to create more um, kind of age groups? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. That's the idea. Like the the club who I inherited the two teams from, they had uh, around nineteen teams, and they wow. had uh, age groups from under seven all the way to under sixteen. Whereas we've just started with under twelve. The plan was to start off with under nines, tens, eleven, twelves, but because of covid we wasn't able to promote and whatnot um so so yeah that that is the idea but we just don't want to stay where we are we actually because i live in this area it was just easy to sit up here but i want to go back to tottenham where i grew up and try to set up yeah. something there i want to go back to all these areas that you hear of crime and and uh, knife violence and whatnot i want to go back into those type of areas also and tap into there and not not save lives. I'm not here. I'm not Superman or whatnot. But it could potentially be. Everyone's got to do their people. bit. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's the plan. Uh, whether we go to South London, whether we go to um, areas in Birmingham, wherever, we're just trying to create a, a network of coaches and whatnot, and and see where that takes us, man. Well, Junior, I just want to say a massive thank you, bro. Jazakallah khair, because uh, yeah. we've, we've, alhamdulillah, I don't know, we could, I've always mentioned to our guests that I'm not like a huge football head. I'm, I, yeah. I, 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 yet, like, alhamdulillah, Allah brings us so many, like, footballers. <laughs> we have yeah. so many footballers, and, and it's so intriguing to hear about the world because I know how much it's, it's changed people's lives. And so, um, it, I think I really, I, I loved hearing your story, man, because. I think it's a story that's so relatable to so many. I, 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 and the fact that you were able to turn a negative into a positive, the fact that you didn't rise to it is probably my favorite part because you can you you get stabbed, bro. You can easily rise to that and say, no, do you know what? This is my uh, this is I've got to get revenge, or I've got or, or this is where my life's at now. Like, what's yeah, the point yeah. in trying to change something positive? And and you look at your life nine years on, and Allahumma barik, you got a family and and a business yeah. and. Um, yeah. And inshallah, you're going to be kind of changing life. So, 
And I, I don't think I answered your question as well because you asked me like, where was it that it cut off for like me not uh, turning pro? Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> just to answer that is is literally because um, at the time uh, all the trials were happening, I didn't, I didn't uh, get a contract, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I started going to college, and then I started to go to a certain college who, which had a football program. And, but I used that football program to be able to, like, um, lure um, academy um, scouts from America because that was another route. If you can't make it here, go to America, go get a scholarship and try and make it professional in America. So I was on my way to do that. I was about to make, um, uh, take my SATs and whatnot. And then literally um, that year, my mum lost her house. Um, uh, the house got repossessed. We was homeless. So even that, okay, I got stabbed, how can I react? Now I'm homeless, how can I react? I could have easily phoned friends or whatnot, can I make some money, da, 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 da. So I just started working, literally just started working, work, been working ever since, and it's only, what, last year that I started the academy. Um, so that's why I, I don't mind talking about it, but I want people to get the idea that whatever you're going through, there's a way out, and Allah makes a way out for those who are sincere, those who are who are um, passionate about what they want to do. Because even like, for example, COVID, COVID happened. People are thinking, people are losing jobs. I know people have lost jobs, but Alhamdulillah, with the will of Allah, I've also set up another kind of, um, another company where um, we do art, we sell phone cases. Um, so it's like it's like so many things. Uh, negative but there's always a positive out of it i've lost my house uh, my mom lost the house how can i react i've got stabbed how can i react how's your mom now alhamdulillah man alhamdulillah man she's she's well man she's well um she's just renting a house right now which is better to be honest less hassle so it's like how 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 do you think about it because uh, on top of this i work for local government full time so So nine to five I, i work for local government but i meet a lot of um, people who are sick, people who are elderly. So I get gems from them as well. So you see certain things. It's like you, you something happens and you're thinking, oh, what's going to happen? But you can actually be better off. So now my mum's renting and she has no problems with the house and whatnot. Whereas when she did have the house and owned it, I mean, when she did have the house, there was problems left, right and centre. So it's like... Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah. We could talk about another a session about all those type of things, but yeah. Are um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna like one day just get all of the footballers that we've had on in their studio, just like a round table. We just have like a lovely discussion. Oh, yeah. Inshallah. No, nah, that would be good. Even not even just football, just sports, just yeah. sports. Like I, I know people who are playing basketball uh, locally who's gone over to America. It could be tennis. It could be like sports. Sports is is is, is key in terms of even with Dean, it keeps you healthy. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Keeps you healthy. Keeps your mind off certain things. Um, takes you away from certain fitness and whatnot. So, yeah, that would be a good idea, man. I'll be down for that, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah, man. We we'll definitely next time we do it, inshallah, come down to the studio. You're only um, you're we're in the same city, so inshallah we'll make it yeah. work and sure. uh, and come down and we'll, we'll have another chat, bro. Jazakallah khair for your for your time, Junior, yeah. and um, yeah. may Allah bless you, man, and put barak and everything you do. Um, yeah. what we'll do is what um, where can people uh find you? Where can they uh, support? Um, so yeah, um, with. With the football, with the academy, it's uh, on Instagram. Uh, we're active on Instagram and on Facebook. So if you just put in Elite Ballers Academy, the ballers is with a Z, not an S. And then uh, apart from that, we I have um, something called Premium Prints, Premium Prints UK. We sell like wall art uh, in frames. Uh, that just literally started during the lockdown. Uh, me and my wife started that um that's also that's the instagram as well premium prince uk we sell phone cases and 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 stuff uh, fashionable phone cases cases and whatnot but those are the two main things those are the two main things we got going on inshallah with the academy um uh, i wanted to do a type of podcast kind of thing where i interview uh men boys who were like me who could have made it to kind of inspire those who are younger um I don't know whether I can get that off the ground, but inshallah we will see. You never know. 
If you need um, any help and, and support with that, bro, message me, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. And, and, then help, top, inshallah. and then on top of that, with the academy, we want to do type of YouTube content and see where we go with that as well. So those are the two things that we got going on right now, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much Amin. for your time, Jim. Jazakallah khair. Thank you no for having me. No worries. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.